How did Tesla just go from being the favorite punching bag of the automotive industry to having those same competitors now lining up to save their own skins by installing Tesla designs in their new vehicles, all the while netting Elon Musk billions in new revenue? Well, Tesla just executed a secret power move that broke the EV industry, and we are going to tell you exactly how they did it. On June 8th, North America's largest automaker, General Motors, announced that they would be adopting Tesla's proprietary EV charging port for all of their future electric vehicles. And this news came exactly two weeks after Ford made history by becoming the first legacy automaker to do the same thing. Seeing the two largest US automakers simultaneously give up and fall in line with Tesla's direction is not something that anyone would have expected to happen right now, and it marks a critical change in the EV landscape for North America. This move will see the vast majority of North American EVs move away from the Combined Charging System, or CCS plug, which had been widely adopted as the worldwide standard for electric vehicles. CCS plugs are mandatory on all EVs sold in the European Union and had been the go-to choice for all non-Tesla EVs in the US up until now. The change comes just six months after Tesla made the surprise decision to boldly name their own connection system the North American Charging Standard, or NACS. Tesla made the announcement in a blog that claims their NACS vehicles outnumber CCS 2 to 1 on the roads of North America and stated that the Tesla charging system is half the size and twice the power of CCS. This is where Tesla first extended the offer to other manufacturers who might want to adopt the Tesla standard, writing, in pursuit of our mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, today we are opening our EV connector design to the world. We invite charging network operators and vehicle manufacturers to put the Tesla charging connector and charge port, now called the North American charging standard, on their equipment and vehicles. Now, given the legacy automakers often patronizing dismissal of Tesla as a legitimate competitor or leader in the EV space for 20 years, we didn't actually expect anyone to accept this offer, but here we are. Tesla's partnership with General Motors is almost exactly the same as the one previously negotiated with Ford. GM will gain immediate access to Tesla's North American network of over 12,000 supercharger locations using Tesla's Magic Dock adapters to allow the currently CCS-equipped vehicles to charge. By 2025, though, GM plans to have all new vehicles made to use Tesla's NACS by default. And just like with Ford, Tesla will be providing GM with their software API, allowing GM's vehicles and mobile app users to search for nearby Tesla superchargers along with other charging locations. We are just now seeing the results of Tesla's plans with charging infrastructure, but they are planting seeds just like this in other areas. For example, AI, building to a world-changing endgame, Tesla robots, millions of droids changing the way we live and work for better or worse. But can the rest of the world keep up? Besides just seven mass tech companies, including Tesla, the largest companies in the world are seeing zero or negative growth and slashing jobs in the tens of thousands. There were even days last year where 99% of stocks, including Tesla, lost value. Now we're all thinking, wait, I'm diversified, why is my portfolio still in the red? Well, Goldman Sachs recently reported the ideal investment mix has shifted, highlighting how you can include real assets to help performance. Real assets like fine art. Goldman says art can help protect your purchasing power, and data shows the market is currently surpassing even its pre-pandemic highs. Luckily, we've already partnered with Masterworks art investing platform for months, and they've sold $45 million in fine art to date, handing back the net proceeds to investors like us, who didn't need millions of dollars or art expertise to get involved. In fact, every one of Masterworks 13 exits has returned a profit. Now, over 730,000 users have signed up to gain access, so there is a wait list, but our partnership means you get VIP access to their latest offerings. So to skip the wait list, check the description.
The issues that plague CCS charging and eventually led to its downfall in North America are a fairly perfect illustration of the legacy auto industry's reluctant struggle to take electric vehicles seriously, and it exposes one significant blind spot in the traditional automotive business model. For the past hundred years, automakers have been largely detached from the idea of customer satisfaction. They just really didn't need to care that much because a company like GM doesn't sell cars to consumers, they sell cars to dealerships. And anything that happens after the customer drives it off the lot is between them and the dealer. From time to time, the automaker will screw something up so badly that they need to initiate a recall, but again, that's largely up to the dealership to figure out. And since every car company was in on the scam, we ended up with this marketplace where all cars sucked more or less equally, and we just kind of had to pick our poison. Except maybe Toyota, but let's be real, Toyotas are kind of boring. So when it came time for the establishment to make their cars electric, it's no surprise that they just stuck on the most basic charging connector they could find and left the customer to figure it out from there. This came in the form of the J1772 plug, which was an AC only charging connector that could supply 120 volts from a standard wall plug or 240 volts from a specially upgraded connection. Best case scenario, it would take like eight hours to fully recharge a car. But again, that wasn't the automaker's problem. Meanwhile, over at Tesla, they entered the market with a revolutionary model to sell direct to customers, exclusively through online ordering. No dealerships, no middlemen, no salespeople. And as part of this direct to customer ethos, Tesla actually wanted people to have a good experience owning and driving their vehicles. So at the same time that they were developing the first Model S, Tesla was also designing the charging system that would best support their product. Elon Musk knew that the only way for an electric vehicle to compete with the existing market and win would be to make the charging experience fast, affordable, and convenient. So the Tesla supercharger and connector system was purpose-built from day one to provide the ideal customer experience. Superchargers provided DC fast charging that could fill the battery of a Model S in 75 minutes or reach 50% state of charge in just 20 minutes. When the rest of the auto industry discovered that people actually wanted their cars to recharge quickly, they made the decision to just stick DC connectors onto the same thing that they were already doing and hope that someone out there would build the charging stations to make it work. Again, not their problem. This is how CCS was born with its gigantic clunky plug. It's just a combination of the old design with a fast charging upgrade tacked on at the bottom. So it should really come as no surprise that the design forward, sleek, efficient, high powered and abundant Tesla charging system won out over the ragged patchwork that CCS would inevitably become. The benefits to Tesla are obvious. Just like a gas station, they take a cut of all the energy consumers purchase through the supercharger. So more supercharger users equals more money. So even if Tesla doesn't get paid for sharing the design, it's still their product that's being used as the standard. And just opening up their network stands to make the company over $5 billion in additional revenue according to some early estimates. But this goes way beyond just charging revenue. It's not just the other car makers who are quickly falling in line with the new Tesla standard. EV hardware and software maker EverChange announced on June 10th that they would be adopting the NACS across their entire network. In a similar move, both XCharge and Blink Charging have moved to adopt the Tesla standard across their networks. XCharge, for instance, has more than 40,000 stations across 25 countries, while Blink operates charging services across the US, and those are just some of the big names. Many smaller charging companies are reaching out to sign up for Tesla's NACS. And it's these companies that, while not having as much political weight as GM or Ford, really show that it's only a matter of time until the NACS is adopted worldwide. Having other charging networks pick up their connector design just multiplied the number of available charging stations for existing and future Tesla owners, and it didn't cost Tesla a dime. But with this avalanche of success, inevitably comes some stumbling blocks. The first is that not all competitors are lining up to adapt their superior tech. 
the larger companies like Electrify America pose a bit of a problem as they already have multi-million dollar deals in place with manufacturers who use the CCS standard, as well as some less used options like the Chatamo and J1772 adapter types. Electrify America is actually a subsidiary of Volkswagen, and they have existing contracts in place with Harley-Davidson, Hyundai, and Lucid Motors, which allow customers from those companies to use their chargers at discounted rates or for free. Adding to that, Electrify America diversified early and placed their charge terminals in places like mall parking lots and secured deals with companies like Walmart and Target to place their stations at those locations as well. This was all built on the CCS charging hardware, and trying to retrofit all of that existing infrastructure to NACS would be a spectacularly costly endeavor. Tesla and its supercharger network is direct competition, and Electrify America may not run as many charge stations, but they have the benefit of being in bed with a lot of powerful companies, and they could choose to fight Tesla on this takeover of the charging scene. The other major roadblock is the notoriously slow speed of government adoption of new technology. In response to the overwhelming support of the NACS over the past two weeks, the White House responded with a statement that basically said the government will not be changing their rules on requiring CCS compatibility to qualify for the new infrastructure tied to the Inflation Reduction Act. And that is disappointing for sure, but the administration does have a good point as well. There are a lot of CCS equipped vehicles already in circulation. It would kind of defeat the purpose of creating a new nationwide infrastructure for electric vehicles that excludes over a third of the current users. Besides, Tesla already has the Magic Dock adapters that let CCS vehicles use their charging stations, so this isn't really a blocker for NACS adoption by the industry, just a setback for changing the standard, at least for the next half decade or so. Regardless, this is a gigantic win for Tesla, who have managed to all but kill the old charging standard in the space of about two weeks while putting them squarely on the throne. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.